Hey guys, welcome back to my Hunter main build guide series. Today we are covering the Solar Assassin's Cowl build. This is one of the best builds for overall survivability and utility. It does well in most content where you're at the light level of the content. It can be used in underlight content, but it doesn't really excel there. Uh, it's really nice for solo flaws dungeons, uh, strikes, raids, all sorts of stuff. But it starts to struggle when you get into content where there are a lot of shields and enemies with uh, lots of health. You can make up for those parts where this build lacks with other parts of the solar subclass that are really strong, like Ember of Empyrean to extend Radiant and Restoration. This season, the build is a bit stronger with the artifact mod Rays of Precision. This gives you free ignitions on precision kills. This will work with knife kills that are precision and weapon kills. Another thing that makes this build really strong is its ability to swap to other solar builds on the fly, like Nighthawk, Shards of Galanor, or Star Eater with Blade Barrage. Now let's get to the core of the build. There are some parts of this build that are extremely important, and there are other parts that just enhance it. The core of the build is the part that is extremely important. So the first part of this is the knock them down solar aspect. This aspect enhances your supers, so if you, for whatever reason, use dead shot, you'll have increased damage resistance, you'll have uh, increased duration on your marksman golden gun, and blade barrage will launch more projectiles, which increases the overall damage output. But on the side, it will give you your full melee energy back when you get a final blow with your powered melee, as long as you're radiant. You can get radiant, with your uh, powered melee by using Ember of Torches. So you throw your melee, it hits an enemy, you get Radiant, and it, the enemy dies, you get your melee back. If for whatever reason you don't kill an enemy with your melee, you can throw on Gambler's Dodge. And this will just be a quick charging way to get your melee back. Other parts of the build that enhance your experience are Ember of Singeing. Ember of Singeing will make it so you have increased uptime on your Gambler's Dodge because your knives will be scorching targets. And because you're also defeating scorched targets, your knife will be up more often with Ember of Searing. With healing nades, you'll be able to apply restoration to yourself and extend that restoration with Ember of Empyrean. With Ember of Empyrean, any solar weapon or ability final blow will extend Restoration and Radiant. It will extend the time up to 12 seconds. It's about three to four seconds per kill. So just keep killing adds and you'll always have Restoration and Radiant. The final slot is kind of up to you what you want to put there. If you're in a team setting, Ember of Benevolence is great because you can apply Restoration or Radiant to allies. And this will just give you more uh, grenade melee and class ability generation. Another option here is Ember of Char. If you have ignitions going on with Rays of Precision from this season, this will spread Scorch to those targets nearby and help you with Ember of Singeing and Ember of Searing. My final recommendation for this slot is Ember of Blistering. This season with Solar Ignitions on the artifact, you'll be able to get more grenade energy with Ember of Blistering. Moving over to armor mods, we'll start on the helmet. The Two mods that I would recommend here are Hands-On for more super energy on melee kills and Dynamo because you'll be able to dodge near enemies for more super energy. You can swap these out depending on how much you value your super or how fast you're getting it with your current build. But if you're gonna swap them out, I'd probably recommend uh, Heavy Ammo Finder and Harmonic Siphon because you're most likely going to be using a solar weapon with this build. On your gauntlets, the first one that I would throw on is Heavy Handed. This will generate orbs on powered melee final blows. Impact Induction will help reduce your grenade cooldown by damaging enemies with powered melee attacks. If your grenade is already up very often, you can throw on Focusing Strike for more class ability energy so you can dodge more often. This pairs really nicely with Dynamo. Chest armor mods would either be resistances or reserves, so depends on what type of content you're running. On your legs, you can run Innervation or Insulation for more grenade or class ability energy. And then whatever else fits. You could run Absolution, you could run Orbs of Restoration, or whatever scavenger or holster you want to put on. Now, I always recommend that you run Special Finisher because this is just a one cost mod that will hold armor charge for you. If you don't have anything that can hold armor charge, 
you will never be able to hold armor charge. So throw on special finisher and any orb you pick up will stack up to three armor charge. And if you hit a finisher, you get free ammo. If you swap to another build that has surges on it, you'll have that armor charge prepped and you don't need to pick up orbs after you swap. Reaper is another good option. If you're getting a lot of weapon final blows, you dodge, you get a final blow, it'll generate an orb. If you don't have space for this or you're not using your weapons a lot, I would swap that to powerful attraction. So when you dodge, you pick up orbs. And finally, depending on how much space you have, I'd either run distribution or a bomber. Now let's talk about the gameplay loop. To start the loop, you just have your powered melee ready, throw your melee at a target. It will give you radiant. It will refund your melee and that will heal you and make you invisible. You just keep repeating this and you can stay alive pretty much infinitely as long as you have enemies to kill. To add on to this, you can use the power of the solar subclass to uh, utilize restoration through Ember of Empyrean and chain that healing on top of the instant healing that you get from Assassin's Cavil. If you can't get a melee kill, you can also go invisible and heal by hitting a finisher. So just get an enemy low, use your finisher, and Assassin's Cowl will make you invisible and heal you. Another thing that you can use alongside this build is your loadouts. For demonstration purposes, I've put together an Assassin's Cowl build and a Celestial Nighthawk build. In the gameplay that you're seeing in the background, I am using Assassin's Cowl to stay alive. And when it comes to damage, I am swapping to Celestial Nighthawk to utilize the enhanced super. After damage, I'll swap back to Assassin's Cowl and have a bunch of survivability. Using loadout swaps like this will help cover up weaknesses of certain exotics. Nighthawk is great for damage, but doesn't have great neutral game. On the other hand, Assassin's Cowl is great for the neutral game and doesn't have great damage. Combine the two and you have a very, very strong build combination. If you don't really want to use loadouts, both of these exotics are helmets. So it's a very quick swap. You just swap to Celestial Nighthawk, pop your super, and then swap back. If you do choose to use loadouts, there are some important things to note. When you preview the subclass, you want to make sure that the super, the abilities, the aspects and fragments are all in the same order. Now for abilities, it doesn't matter too much. You'll just lose the ability energy when you swap. But if your super aspects or fragments are out of order or incorrect, you'll lose all ability energy, including your super. So just make sure that you note the order of the aspects and fragments before you save your second loadout. As you can see, my Assassin's Cowl loadout has Marksman, Knock Him Down, On Your Mark, Searing, Benevolent, Singeing, Torches, Empyrean. And my Celestial Nighthawk build has the exact same order. If even one of these fragments is swapped, you'll lose all ability energy. The best way to make sure that you have this all set up is to equip one loadout, save it with all of the abilities and fragments that you need, and then make your second loadout, but save that on another subclass. Now, swap back to the loadout that has the subclass that you want. Equip the armor for the new loadout, and then swap to the subclass that you just had on your other loadout. This will have everything in the correct order. All you have to do is overwrite. Now, something that I should have mentioned earlier in the video when I was going over abilities is which knife to use. My favorite one to use with this build is Knife Trick. These are probably the easiest way to just consistently land final blows. They don't have as much range as the other knives, but with this build, range doesn't really matter because of your invisibility. Now, if you're struggling with knife trick, you can put on proximity explosive knife. This one works for sure. Some people prefer this over knife trick. I just seem to have some bad luck with it sometimes with landing those final blows. Sometimes it seems like you'll get a final blow if you hit a direct hit. Um, sometimes it'll land final blows on the weaker enemies if it's on the ground. This one is just inconsistent for me, so I stick with knife trick. If you stuck around at this point of the video, I thought I would mention that 95% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed. If you fall into that percentage, I'd really appreciate it if you drop a subscription to the channel. It would help me out a lot. Now, if there are any builds that you want to see me make a video about, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see. 
If you have any questions about this build, also drop a comment and uh, I'm pretty quick to respond to those comments. So don't be afraid to ask. Now that's all I've got for this video. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. Drop a like, uh, comment and subscription. Uh, and I will see you guys next time.